Good morning. It is Wednesday, 8th of March, about 5 to 7 in the morning. Been home from work quite a bit, doing a bit of research for today's talk. Right, I'll tell you now, today might be a bit long and so those who want to make a cup of coffee, cup of tea, get a few snacks, we'll take a quick pause while you do that. Right, you've had time to pause the video. Right, what's today's subject? This subject came out of the conversations I said yesterday I me mean, Joe spent over seven hours talking Monday night and we got talking about YouTube and the amount of youngish gay people that are on it actually saying, hey, you know, I'm gay. <clears throat> First off, no problems with that. Good luck to them. I'm glad they're able to do it. When I was their age, I wouldn't have dared do it. But we got talking about the history of the gay liberation, if you like. <clears throat> so I thought I'd do my own quick versions of the history. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Also I'm going to touch on, I mentioned yesterday in the video about calf moss and the Blackpool trip. I'll explain what calf moss is. Oh, excuse me. <clears throat> Got a hair or something there. So we'll talk about that as well. So I'm going to touch from mainly British gay liberation and slightly touch on the American because it is important, some of the stuff. Especially when we start talking about the history, you'll see. Yeah, all right. I think so. So, let's talk about pre-law. Before it was made legal. <clears throat> right, first thing is people think it was illegal to be gay, to be homosexual. No, it wasn't. You could be homosexual. It was illegal to act on it. In other words, find another homosexual and have sex. Quite a distinction there. To get around this, people got married. They basically performed as a husband, produced children. But at night they used to go and visit what they used to call cottages. Public lavatories they were called cottages because they were shaped like cottages. Like four walls, roof. So they were called cottages. There was a danger in this because the police used to raid these places, used to put plain clothes policemen in. What someone would Class has been entrapment, arrested, took before the judge and sentence. Some houses were raided with people, basically bursting, what you would see in modern days, drug busts, bursting the door down, going in, catching people in bed together. I mean, how ridiculous. Some of the sentences were actually quite severe. I think it was for buggery, what they call buggery, in other words, anal sex. You could be sentenced to like 10 years imprisonment. People being sent to prison for gay sex that were getting longer sentences than robbers, armed robbers. <laughs> the British justice system. <laughs> I 
But then again, a lot of guys said they found it, oh, some of the older guys said they found this time actually more exciting than the modern time. Because there was that excitement that if we caught. There was a famous person caught, and this gives an example of how severe it was. His name was Alan Turing, just Benedict Cuth um, Cumberpatch has just played him in the film called The Imitation Game. He was caught, sentenced, he decided to go for chemical castration. Became so depressed that he actually committed suicide and there are cases that people did actually commit suicide over this. It was that much of a stigma. So that's pre-law. People got married or people stayed single, you know, a confirmed bachelor. Most people knew what that meant. Or they got married and cheated on the wife. Again, if they were caught, they weren't just their lives ruined, it was their wife's life ruined. If they had kids, the kids. So, they hid it. Another way they hid it is came up with this language called Polari. Didn't really spread much out of London. <clears throat> and it was like, the only way I can describe it, it was like the gay version of the Cockney slang. You know, apples and pears stairs. Well, the gay community brought out this language, Polari. I can't speak it. And in some respects, it's a shame. But I found a link of somebody that's speaking it, so I'll put it on. Also found a website, so I'll put a link that gives you the definition of the words. But this became a famous talking subject because there was a radio show called Around the Horn. And one of the actors there was a very famous gentleman who appeared later in the Carry On films called Kenneth Williams. And he was gay and he attended these clubs and stuff and he learnt Polari. Well, in the show, they had two characters called Sandy and Julian who kept speaking Polari to each other. And people thought, oh, isn't that nice? Oh, Cockney slang. The homosexual community would burst themselves with laughter because they knew exactly what they were saying. So that's it. So we then come up to 1957. A commission was put together and the head of it was Wolfenden and it became known as the Wolfenden Report. Their advice was decriminalisation, decriminalise homosexuality as long as it's kept in private. I think there were still some acts that were still advised to be, that was so shocking that should still be made illegal but Homosexuality, struck away. No. Most people think that's when homosexuality became legal. No, it's not. Because this report was made, it then had to go through committee after committee after committee. It wasn't until, until 1965 by a gentleman called Lord Arra that produced the Sexual Offences Bill. That was the bill that eventually made homosexuality, the acts of homosexuality, legal. But we're still not talking 1965. It went to Parliament, debated, had to go to the House of Lords, and it was finally ascended by the Queen in 1967. And that's when it became law. And they set the age of consent as 21. Because anybody under the age of 21 was not mature enough to decide if they were gay. Give me a break. What a load of crap. That is the most ridiculous thing ever said. I can tell you now, at age of 13, I knew I was gay. Age of 15, 
I'd started acting on them feelings. You've got the gay liberation fronts and the gay marches and stuff like that, eventually this pressure group. And in 1994 it was reduced to the age of 18. But people weren't still happy. They wanted equality with the heterosexual community. The heterosexual community could start having sex at the age of 16. The millennium year, year 2000, it was reduced to the age of 16. Now, we do have a certain section of society that would like to, to be reduced even further, probably 14. Me personally, no. 16 is the right age, and I will explain the reason for this. That's the age when somebody leaves school, can actually leave school, age of 16. Age of 16, the class is an adult, they go out, they have to they go and find a job, start the working life. 14 to me is too young, 18 is too old. 16 to me is the right age. So that's where we stand. <clears throat> so that's the progression from it going before the law, through the Wolfton Report, Lord Ara, to the Royal Ascension, and then reducing down to the age of 16. That's how it happened in England. In America, I'm not too sure, so probably some of my American friends can put me correct. But there were gay things, it was a similar sort of thing, and the big main gay revolution was the Stonewall riots in 1969. <clears throat> this was a pub that was known to be as gay friendly, I would say. And it was the Stonewall Inn, and that was in Greenwich Village in Manhattan, New York. It used to get raided, people used to get arrested, took it out, night in the cells, slap across the hand, bit of a fine, bugger off, don't let's catch you again. This particular night they went in a bit heavy handed and some people were injured. This created a massive riot in Greenwich Village. The gay people with the handbags, uh, and there were actually drag queens there with the handbags hitting the soldiers, uh, police officers. Right, and from that, the organisation called Stonewall was established. Started in there, but eventually came a countrywide acceptance. Uh, my friend Joe Kersey, if you didn't listen to his autobiographies, he talks about how he supported these these groups actually sat on the committees and fundraised for them in England we had the LGBT doesn't sound as impressive as Stonewall I have signed petitions I've done things for them not raised much money I've gone on marches and stuff like that so that's fine so I've done my bit of acti activists, signed the petitions, took the petitions round, encouraged people to sign petitions when the internet came out and stuff like that. Not as much as some, some other people. So it became legal. 70s was a bit of a, because even though it was legal, you still had the homophobic, you still had the old feelings of the straight society. <clears throat> when I started, there's no way I would have gone, in, gone on the internet if we had the internet at that time and said, I'm gay. The backlash would have been terrific. I would say it's only since 2000, the new millennium, that homosexuality has become accepted part of society. Before then, you could still be beaten up, attacked, because you were a queer, you were a puffer, etc. 
So, we go through the Santas. Then we came to the age of disco. And we came into the 80s. And we had the gay dress codes. <clears throat> For that, people dressed out normally. Slacks. Nice shirt, probably a tie. Go out to these budging in uh, these evolving gay clubs and gay pu pubs and stuff like that. Then they came the people that went and we should identify ourselves. The first thing was, and I must admit it, I had one. I had one. The lumberjack shirts, you know, like the tartans. Yes, I had one. <laughs> And then you had like the tank top vests, you know, with the straps down. And very tight. Looked impressive on some guys. Muscular, six pack. You know, ooh, looked very, very sexy. The problem is. Then you had the people with the 46 inch waist, the flabby arms, great big throat, you know, basically goit of throat, tried to wear these tight, <laughs> definitely put off straight away. And then you had the people with the tank tops and there was the, uh, the uh, lumberjack shirt on top, but the lumberjack shirt used to be unbuttoned and... Usually decent trousers or jeans. Jeans in the 70s and 80s are so ripped in gay pubs. Well, now we pay for, people used to just rip them. Especially around, should we say, the back area. Yeah. But ripped jeans, decent shoe. shoes, mainly boots like the Winkle Pickers or the Cowboy Tart boots. I used to dress up like that and go to these gay pubs in Nottingham or go to the gay pubs in Manchester. They were fun, they were fun nights, the fun nights. And then during the day you had the people in the shorts. These were guys, not runners, not muscular legs, not hairy legs, Joe hairy legs, but not muscular, legs like a bean pole. And they would wear the shorts. Now, I'm wearing shorts today. Just come on, like these, you know, like the fencer. We're not talking them shorts, we're talking the shorts that would come up here, like runners, and end up with about that much material at the side. The proper athlete shorts, if you like, the runner's shorts, with the tank tops on. Then they used to have like a visor on, usually pink. And then you had the crowd to show that they were butch. Used to grow the moustaches, but not just a moustache. It had to be one of these moustaches that went across and then came down sharpish to probably level of the mouth. So, come. <clears throat> and then they wore in the clothes the leather jackets with the chains on because they were butch. What a load of bullshit. I, I talked to some of these and they were the biggest queens. Going. They were the they were the bitchiest queens going. <laughs> oh Lord. So you had that. I know it was popular in America, but then you had 
Thank you, Chief Cold. <laughs> oh, handkerchief cold. Now, I'll say these aren't handkerchiefs as we know handkerchiefs. These were like the badana. Uh, badanas, you know, the head chiefs, you know, handkerchief things. What people did, they wore them in the back pocket. And depending which side they wore them would depend what they're into. If they wore it in the left, that means they were top, active. They would, they're the ones that would. The right and the right, they were bottom, they were passive, they were the receivers, they are the ones that like to be. But then you had different coloured of these bedan um, bandanas. Bandanas, that's what I, I, I was thinking. Bandanas, I, I'm thinking bananas. <laughs> bandanas. A different colour of the bandanas in the pipe pocket. And each colour meant a different thing. Again, I have found. You. Trust me. The straight world out there won't believe this list i'm telling you now and i will put on in the description you 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 won't believe this, this stuff it's on this list trust me <laughs> well i made a list of a few um if it was black, they were into heavy S&M, sadomasochism. If it was light blue, they were into oral sex, socking. Navy blue, they were into anal, in other words, anal sex. If they were red, they were into the um, fisting. The man. For them out there who don't know. <sighs> Yellow was water sports. Now people out there will go, what sports? Oh, water polo. It's something. Go. Go away. Go, away. go on the internet, look. We are talking urine. We are talking pee. Wait. Good luck on it. Trust me. Trust me. Good luck on the internet. Beige was rimming. <laughs> what did I think? I could read this list straight. And white with jacket off. Masturbation. I will put the list up. You can look at it. People, oh, an orange. If you were brave enough to wear orange and bandana, bandana, it means you were into everything. <laughs> oh, what fun, what fun, what fun. <laughs> so we got the fashion there. Eventually it's all calmed down. It, people just dress as normal. Then we got like the internet. Internet. Brilliant service. I got my computer 2001 and straight away the gay world was open to me. Websites, information. Buy stuff, essentials, condoms, etc. like that over the Internet. It's simple things like if I am going, let's pick a town. Newcastle on time. Newcastle on time. Up north. I can go on the internet, find out where the gay pubs are, where the gay section of the city is, etc. If there is one. Well. Good here. Socialise. And have fun. Then you have what's called. <laughs> the dating age. 
agents sites a, and I said agencies sites too numerous to mention I remember two uh, three four seriously three four and then I've got my name on a couple others which I don't particularly check what should I say about the dating sites <laughs> these were originally set up so people could find partners and we're not talking partners for one night we are talking partners for life a lot of these sites have become basically access for sex you go on find somebody you like chat to them for a couple of messages do you fancy go out for a drink go out for a drink you get on well you either go back to their house or they come back to your house and basically you screw you have sex get on well may keep in touch and may meet on regular occasions but while you're meeting them, you're probably meeting somebody else. Then you come on to occasions like threesomes, foursomes. Threesomes can be fun. I said before, I will be totally honest in these videos. I've done threesomes, it can be fun. I've done, I've done a couple of threesomes, it can be fun. So these websites are not serious dangers. People, but saying that, that people have found lifelong partners on them. Majority of them though were what I would say fuck sites. Basically find somebody to spend a few hours to get with, together with, and have some fun. I'm sure it's true in America as well. <sighs> then through the internet you have chat sites. I mean, Joe chat to each other. That's usually through Skype. Some people use these instant messaging services, especially if they got video for what we would call cam to cam. Basically, watching each other undress, watching each other fool about, stuff like that. It's not my type of thing. I prefer the real meets. But it just happen. Also, some of these websites do have their own private, uh, their own chat rooms as part of the site. Me and Joe, nothing like that. It's basically laughing, joking, chatting. So let's be honest, seven hours. If you think that's all we did for seven hours, bleh, oh, bleh, I'm getting too old for that length of time. Then, of course, if you want some to watch some action, then there's the porno signs. A lot of controversy about the porno signs, and I can, in some respects, I can see why. Some are too easily accessible. All you do is prick it, you put your details in, it says, are you over 18, press to enter, press to leave. Um, press to enter if you're over 18, press to leave if you're under 18. Pfft. There's no checks or anything like that. So I know there's been a lot of complaints about young kids looking at these signs. A couple of things there about that. <clears throat> I've known parents with kids and their children got computers in the bedroom. We're talking about 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 year olds. My opinion is a child of that age should not have a computer in the bedroom. It should be down somewhere in common ground that you can monitor what they're doing with it. If they're going to have some sort of device in the bedroom then you should have proper security settings on it so they can't access these sites oh. 
Then we've got the problem about the phones. I've seen kids 8, 9, 10 with the latest mobile. We are talking six, seven hundred pound phones. Better. I've got a Samsung S4. Better phones than I've got. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No parental locks on them or anything. So they can access anything they want on the internet. Why does a child that age need that sort of phone? I did, I know the answer to that because I did actually see it just before Christmas. A child wanted a phone and when a mum picked, oh, this will be fine for you. She actually threw a paddy because she wanted the new uh, iPhone 5. No other reason than her, all her friends had got one and so why should she be left out while they had one? And she was, I mean, we are talking a literal part. She threw herself on the floor, crying, kicking, screaming. At which point the mother, and I'm surprised she had the courage to do it, turned around to, instead of giving in to the child, turned around and said, well, if you're behaving that way, well, you won't have a phone at all. It's either this phone or you don't have a phone. I'm not paying that sort of money for a child of your age. So we know why kids end up with these. Expensive phones, expensive iPads. The sites can make you a bit more secure by you having to put a credit card number in or something like that. Uh, but then again, that sort of thing, if they did that, who's to say the child won't get the parents? credit card or bank card and just put the number in from that it yeah then talking about deducting money to put it back listen parents don't buy your kids these expensive phones don't buy your kids ex these expensive computers and if you're going to have a computer put it where you can access it and keep a watch on what they're doing In the end, it's your responsibility. Sorry about that, but it is. Just going to take a quick break because my throat's getting a bit dry. To get a drink, then we'll come back. Right, we are back. I've got another drink. I've got another drink. <laughs> where we are at the moment so as I said we've gone from it being illegal to legal but you have to be a certain age down to a certain age down to equality with heterosexuals I know in America it's a bit different because their age of consent is in some of their areas is 18 so of course the made gay community same legal age as the heterosexual community which is 18 Price heterosexual age of consent is 18. In England as well as America, yeah, the problem is if you do start as an old guy playing about with people under the age of age of consent, it's classed as rape. It, as is, at the age of 13, I knew I was gay. At the age of 15, I was playing about. But at the age of 15, even though I knew I was gay and I knew what I was getting into and I enjoyed what I was getting into, I legally could not give my consent because I'm under the age of consent. That's how it basically works. Oh, people follow the foul of the law on that. Meet people, start having sex. Oh, well, he's underage. Well, he's agreed to it. Yeah, but legally he can't because he's underage. So that's where we are at the moment. Um, I had talked about yesterday Calf Moss, the Blackpool do. Calf Moss is a gay organisation. It is a website, one of these dating websites, and it's a brilliant website. CAFMOS is an acronym, 
acronym, why it's made up of the letters. Charlie, Alpha, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Mexico, Oscar, Sierra, CAFMOS. Stands for Care and Friendship for Men Over 60. We are talking a website for intergenerational relationships. I, at one time, used to be thought of as an admirer. I am now getting to the age where I am being considered as a daddy. <laughs> oh, it's fun, it's fun, it's fun. It was established in 1988, so in the really early days of the internet. I joined in the year 2001 and I've made some good friends on there and I'm not talking about sex, I'm talking about good friends. People I chat to. But every, uh, well, let's start with the simple things first. Every month certain areas have like a luncheon. Get the members together. Right, I'm going to meet at this. They usually have a standard pub. I'm going to meet at this pub the first Sunday of every month and we're going to have a dinner. Come and join us. Brilliant idea. But what they do twice a year in England, they have a weekend away. One in Blackpool, to cater for the people in the north of the country, and one in Bournemouth, people of the south. Never been to the Bournemouth one, basically it's too far. You talk about something like seven, eight hours journey down. A friend, a friend, I said come down and spend the night with him and then we go down together, but it's still too far. So I've been to the Blackpool one quite a few times. Right, let's get into it. First off, and I think this is hilarious. The hotel is called the Queen's Hotel. One of the derogatory remarks about gay men, especially if they're very effeminate, is you're a bunch of queens. So we go to the Queen's Hotel. <sighs> this is 110. 110 room hotel. We take over the hotel for the weekend. It's for our exclusive use. And up to yet, we've done pretty well to fill the hotel. So you are talking 110 rooms of gay men. No, right, nothing's done in public, but let's put it this way, there is some fun to be had. Some go there as couples and don't play about, stuff like that, they go for the companion. It may sound like I'm sound, making this sound like it's a sex fest and an orgy. It's not, it's not. It's more about the companionship, you're with, with a bunch of guys that think exactly the same as you, some have had the same experiences as you, and you can talk, and you can laugh, and you can drink, and you can eat, and you can go out, and stuff like that. But it's like I've said, it does happen. <laughs> I have walked back to my room at seven o'clock in the morning, with the clothes I've had on the night before, with the jacket over the shoulder, the shirt undone. And people have said to me, hmm, get, you can guess what you were doing last night? Not an angel, not a slut, but we have fun. But it's like I said to people that go, look at me and go, oh! we're adults, we're over 21. 
<laughs> 21. That's a phrase that came from the gay community. We're over 21. But we're over 21. We're adults. We act sensibly. We don't flaunt it in front of staff. You know, we're not screaming queens and we're not having sex on, on top of the pool room table or in the dining room. We're sensible and we keep it private. We do go see shows, we do go, some go to the pleasure beach, some it's older and not okay, but just like to sit around the hotel and just chew the fat with people, you know, just talk to people. It's fine. I've done that, I've, one year it was absolutely slinging down with rain, so I sat there, about ten of us sat in a circle and we, we chatted. It was brilliant, chatted. And it was a fun, fun night. Well, fun afternoon. I'm sorry, fun afternoon. The meals are fantastic. Oh, they look after us. This used to be a privately owned hotel and a company took over it. They do, like, the coach holidays. You told they had me talk about culture. Well, people, this was one similar sort of thing. Problem is with coach holidays, you get like families going and old couples going and stuff like that. When we go, it's fun. The staff enjoy it for start up. And we drink, and we drink, and we drink. One year we drunk the bar dry. They ran out, uh, I think it was one of the lagers and one of the beers. They had to beg. Some more beer to keep us going for us last night of that, plus also arrange some emergency deliveries. They had to go to the local off license to buy the whiskey, the brandy, the gin, the Southern Comfort, and I think the Bacardi because we drunk it all. They admitted some nights we are spending more in one night than they probably took over three tills in the previous month. When the company took over and heard Calf Moss, because they came and threw the books down things like the Grand National, oh yeah, they the boxing, oh yeah, Calf Moss, what's this? And the bloke went, ah, right, well, um, it's a gay organisation. And from what I can gather, the immediate reaction was, oh, Okay, so what happens? So they tell me what happens, you know, we meet them. The first thing they said is, the hotel's booked solid. Oh, okay. Next thing was, we drink the bar dry. <laughs> and the, from what I can gather, from the head office, the rep that sent me went, oh, right, okay then, and signed it off. <laughs> And it was a case of, you do whatever you need to keep these people coming. We, in the end, it's that money. They can't afford to lose business like that. Full occupancy, drinking the bar dry, all the last stuff. And I will tell you now, some of the staff get totally involved. I'm, I'm not talking about dressing up hard, but they... They are game for a laugh. They, they, they are game for a laugh. And they enjoy it as much as we do. We do have couples come. As well as singles. That says there's couples that come that just stay together. And there's other couples that do play either together or play apart. Good way to describe it is somebody who wants to describe to me as sauna rules. Sauna, gay saunas. I think in America you call them bathhouses. Basically, what happens in a sauna stays in the sauna. They have certain rules, oh, I, I, I don't want you to do this, I don't want you to do that, I don't want you to... But um, everything else is up for grabs. But as soon as they leave Blackpool, go home. Then they don't play about. So that's it. 
So it is a good, good, very good, good company, good alcohol, good laughs, and some good company for a few nights. So that's my take. Like I says, in some respects, I, like I said, when me and John were talking, we don't know how much the younger generation appreciates the freedom they have. To be able to sit here in front of the computer and go, I'm gay. When I was 15, 16, I wouldn't have sat here and gone, I'm gay. But start off, I'm gay, and I'm having sex would have been illegal. It would have been illegal. Because I went 21. I says, I grew up. Some people grew up at the day when it was legal. I was a, grew up, started my sex life where it was still illegal until you were 21. I says, it was 94. Before it came down to 18. So that's. 65, 75, 85, so I'd be 29 before it came down to 18. So when I started my sex life, I was encouraging people to make, to break the law. But then again, what a stupid law. So, uh, I want to do a quick talk. Just a quick talk. It's been a lot. It's been a lot. I mean, I will put in about the Polari, a link to the Polari on the way, a link to the Polari on Wikipedia. I will put. I <laughs> And I dread it when some of you look at them and. <laughs> you are going. It's, it's going to be a wake-up call to some of you. It is going to be a wake-up call to a hell of a lot of you. But it's fun. So, thanks again for listening to all this absolute drivel that I speak. <laughs> I just wanted to do a quick talk in it. It blossomed a bit further than I probably would have originally done. But I hope some of you found it's a bit of interest and a bit of a laugh. <laughs> I know Joe's going to look and think, oh, what the hell is he on about? <laughs> He's told me about him going out with the, the plaid shirt on, like the lumberjack shirt. He's, he's already told me about that. He's going to go. I did that. I did that. <laughs> it's well. <laughs> it's one of them things. It's a fashion thing. It's a fashion thing. It was the fashion it then in the gay community. He wore these, and then it became the fashion that you wore the like the tight tank vest type tops. It was just the fashion that happened. But you sort to look at them now, and you think, I used to wear that. Boy, didn't I look a prat. <laughs> Thanks very much. Speak again soon. Have a good week, all of you. And keep watching. Who knows, I might put one up later on this week. Bye for now.